Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel. In this video, we're going to be doing a full review of the Zelos Swordfish, which is the watch that is in front of me currently. If you're familiar with the brand Zelos, they are based in Singapore, and the Swordfish line is kind of considered their entry-level dive watch, although they continue to improve the models year over year, and in this particular case, this is the titanium iteration of a swordfish that is also 40 millimeters in case diameter and is done in forged carbon, which you can actually see that forged carbon pattern there on the dial as well as the bezel insert. And I think it plays extremely nicely with the gilt markers on the dial and bezel. Now personally, I really like the swordfish from Zelos. I just think that it offers a lot of bang per buck. Early bird prices for these watches typically sit around uh, 299 US dollars and go up to about $400 depending on the, uh, the colorway you choose, the case material, and some of the other features of the watch. This one I think the early bird price was $369 but has since shot up to about $460 and it's actually sold out on their website but I have it in front of me so you guys can take a closer look at the specs. So if we crunch the numbers, as I alluded to, uh, this swordfish is a 40 millimeter case diameter. And if you flip it to the side here, uh, lug to lug between my thumbs comes in at about 45.5 millimeters. Although there are uh, male end links to the supply titanium bracelet that extend the effective lug to lug by a few millimeters, but it's really not that noticeable in my opinion. In terms of overall case height, I measure about 12.4 millimeters from the bottom of the case pack that has a nice embossed swordfish on it to the top of a flat sapphire crystal that carries some anti-reflective treatment on it. And uh, the last measurement I like to discuss is the lug opening for the supplied bracelet is an even 20 millimeters and the bracelet does have a very slight taper to about 18 millimeters before you get to the Zelos clasp. Personally, I really like the clasp that Zelos do on these watches. There's no on-the-fly micro-adjustment, but you do get six micro-adjustment anchoring points. The clasp does have a Zelos logo. It is nicely brushed and bead blasted, and you have a fold-over security mechanism. And the swing arm portion is nicely milled out titanium as well. Now if we roll back to the dial, I really think that this forged carbon version is really dynamic and offers quite a fair bit of visual interest. Now the swordfish always kind of interests me because the dial is always a sandwich dial. That means you have a top portion here where you have the applied Zelos logo near the 12. You have uh, writing near the six o'clock position that simply states swordfish 40 and then the 200 meters of water resistant rating. But below that dial, um, you can actually see the faux patina or the gilt-like markers. That's all uh, a sandwich bottom section of a dial and it's fully loomed up with X1 grade Super Luminova. And then at the very periphery of a dial you can actually see a running minute track or a chapter ring that's done in white. And I like how the uh, Zelos uh, Swordfish has the seconds hand with the red tip that reaches all the way to the edge of a dial and uh, passes over the running mini track quite easily. One interesting feature about uh, Zelos is that they tend to do a bi or two color loom application. So you do have X1 grade loom on the handset, the sandwich section of a dial, and even the bezel. But uh, that uh, running mini track or chaptering at the periphery is actually done with blue BGW9. So I'll throw up a low light shot too, just so you can see how well this watch lights up. With Zelos, it really never disappoints with Loom when it comes to their dive watch models. Now, I wasn't 100% sure how they create a forged carbon pattern, but you can actually see that uh, it almost looks like a canvas where somebody just kind of smeared um, different hues of grays or charcoal together. And at a macro level, I really like the different texture. I like to think that each of the forged carbon dials is kind of unique in uh, their look, as well as the forged carbon pattern that's done on the uh, bezel insert. Now, the rest of the dial is actually fairly devoid of any writing, aside from what I mentioned earlier, which I kind of like. The symmetry for the dial is there, 
And it even does provide a, a date window, but it's done at the six o'clock position with a slightly truncated sandwich marker, which I really like. And the handset is also done in a gold or gilt color. So the hands themselves are uh, slightly polished and you can also see that uh, the minute and hour hand are broad sword style shapes. But they are different enough that you can easily distinguish between the two. So getting a quick read on time is quite easy to do with this watch. Now if you look at the side profile of the case and bezel, um, Zelos does a really good job with having uh, the teeth of the bezel slightly overhang the side of the case. It's a 120 click unidirectional bezel. The action is audible and a little bit tight. But you get very precise detents and the alignment on this bezel insert is actually spot on which I really appreciate considering the price point. Now taking a look at the finishing uh, over the case and bracelet, there's really no polishing to be found. It's pretty much uh, just um, different uh, forms of brushing. You have some uh, longitudinal brushing on the sides of the case, which is quite angular. And then you have a more of a bead blasted finish in some other areas. The crown is nicely sized and slightly recessed into the case. And if you unwind this screw down crown, um, inside beats uh, a Seiko NH35, which is a 24 joule movement, carrying about 42 hours of power reserve. It ticks away at three hertz or 21,600 vibrations per hour. And I got quite lucky with this one because with respect to accuracy, my time grapher picked up this watch, only gaining about one or two seconds per day with a fairly healthy amplitude as well. Now you can manually wind uh, this NH35 uh, in the neutral position. There's an intermediate position where you can quickly cycle the uh, date. And then if you pull all the way out, you can stop the seconds and set to any reference time that you'd like. And you can see that the crown doesn't really wobble at all. And uh, it's quite easy to operate even with gloved hands. Now I do want to touch a little bit more on this bracelet because I think it's quite well done for the price. It is done in titanium. You can see that uh, it's quite angular and each individual link is fairly short and staggered. You do have uh, screw pins holding each link in place. So it's quite easy to size. All you need is a fine slot screwdriver to unscrew each of the pins to resize. We already touched on the clasp and uh, the fact that all of this is done in titanium means that the bracelet sits very comfortably on the wrist and uh, there's a little bit of flex to it, but I'm not too worried because it is a bit uh, lighter of a material, but it's also quite durable. And if you take a look at the case back, you can actually see on the underside of the watch, there are uh, quick release spring bars for this bracelet as well. So if you actually squeeze both of the quick release bars together, you can actually quickly remove the bracelet and then uh, swap this to a strap if you'd like. So here's a quick wrist shot just to show you how this 40 millimeter Zelos swordfish sits on my 19 centimeter circumference wrist. Uh, that's about seven and a half inches if you're going with the imperial measurements. And because this watch is done in full titanium, the weight is quite comfortable, coming in at a very nice 116 grams sized up for my wrist. It's uh, very solidly planted on the wrist. And again, I like the length of a clasp and the fact that you have so many layers of micro adjustment points. So that's just a quick overview of the uh, Zelos titanium swordfish with the forged carbon dial. If I had to list any minor potential points for improvement, I would like to see uh, a little bit better execution of the dial. If you were to take a close macro look at this watch, you can see some um, particles or fine specks, but I think part of that is the nature of putting together a sandwich dial. And also you have to factor in the cost, which again, this is considered their entry level diver. And the last thing I'll mention, and this is purely personal preference, is I'm not actually a big fan of these uh, quick release spring bars to remove a bracelet. I'd rather just see a more traditional fixed spring bar and maybe instead replace uh, these quick release spring bars with drilled lug holes. So it's actually quite easy to get to the spring bars when you want to swap between this and a strap. But as always guys, if you have any questions or comments about this particular timepiece, make sure you drop them in the description of this video. I always check the comments. 
And I do want to thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel if you enjoy the content. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next review.